Olá amigos, aqui é o Eduardo Moradia, em mais uma edição do Strike Canal, hoje com uma personalidade impressionante na cena do Heavy Metal mundial, o grande Tim Ripper Owens, que está aqui ao meu lado, cedeu um pouquinho do seu tempo para conversar conosco sobre a história da sua carreira. Né? Ele está aqui no Brasil fazendo alguns shows solo, uma banda formada por músicos brasileiros, né? E nós estamos aqui em São Paulo, no hotel onde ele está hospedado, para conversar um pouquinho com ele sobre a sua carreira. Então, vamos conversar com este grande vocalista do Heavy Metal, né? Que é uma grande honra para nós estar, estarmos aqui com ele, né? Realmente. E, e graças não só a ele, né? Que está nos cedendo esse tempo, mas como o Silvio Roja, da Open the Road Booking Management, que tem sempre sendo, se, sido um grande brother do metal conosco, né? É, o, o respeito. <risos> então vamos lá, antes que o nosso entrevistado durma. Well, <risos> well guys, this is uh, one of the best rap metal singers from the 80s generation. Yes, T. Ripper Owens, or better, T. Ripper Owens, has a representative discography. Uh, had recorded albums with Winter's Band. See, if you don't uh, know Winter's Band, please listen to the Heart of Killer album. Very excellent album. And Judas Priest, I see the Earth, Beyond Fear, Wind Mountains, among the others, and, and, and in, in some projects, for, uh, some tribute, tribute and cover projects. And then, uh, I, would like, I would like to say thank you for this chance to interview. We are very honored and proud for this Thank moment. You. Thank you. And Winter's Bell. Uh, Heart of Killer, in my personal opinion, is one of the best albums uh, released in the, 80, in the 90s. How did you join the band? And which was your contribution, real contribution to them? Uh, you know, they were a local band. Um, they had a, a cassette tape out. And, um, you know, they were looking for a singer after the singer had left. And, I was friends with them and uh, decided to, to audition and join the band. And, uh, and it was, uh, you know, they already had, like I said, a demo recorded with, with uh, a few songs like Haunted House and a couple other songs, Damnation and stuff. But, but um, you know, fortunately I was able to help write the Heart of the Killer record with mm -hmm. Lou and Lou and myself. And, uh, you know, we got a. We got a record deal with Massacre Records out of Germany, and you know, heavy metal and hard rock wasn't very good in 1994. Mm -hmm. So it was very bad at times. So it was really hard for us to do anything. But you know, we were able to go to Germany and make a record. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, right after that, then you you did a tribute to Judas Priest, uh, Brit Steel, with the band uh, with the, with the yes. band members, huh? Well, you know. And the reason why was because heavy metal was so bad at the time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, an American um, agency said, "You know, you guys should do a Judas Priest tribute band. Judas Priest isn't together anymore, and and you could tour around, open up as Winter's Bane, and then get paid more money and go play Judas Priest." Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we we did that for for a little bit, you know. Then then Winter's Bane broke up along that road route, and then. I uh, quit the Juice Priest Tribute Band. It wasn't it? We didn't do it that long, but it was a, it was a good way to get Winter's Bane out to more places, you know, and go play Juice Priest. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was uh it was interesting. Oh, okay. And it was hard. One whole set of Winter's Bane, and then one whole night of Juice Priest. Oh, so it was okay. a pretty hard night. Uh huh. Okay. Mm, according to the information we we have. Uh, uh, they, 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 they did the audition with you, Judas Priest did the audition with you after the, 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 the CIA uh, V8 yes, video tape, from, yeah. from yeah, That's all we had then. We only had videotapes. We didn't have the internet or uh, uh, YouTube or, or anything. It was, there was, wasn't even really DVDs, I don't think. It was videos and uh, uh, 1996, February of 96. They, I, had, I had met Scott Travis. Uh, we had played in Virginia Beach with the Jewish Christian band, and Scott sat in and played drums, so I met him and heard me. Mm -hmm. So he got a hold of this videotape, and uh, yeah, they, they, it was my last show in the Jewish Christian band. I quit the Jewish Christian band because 
I was singing terrible. I couldn't sing Jesus Christ. I didn't like it. Uh, my voice was not very good. And uh, so, but they videotaped on that show and got a hold of it. And, oh boy, that was it. And I sang good on it. Well, no singing well. I wasn't singing good at one time. I kind of lost the passion, and uh, the crowds weren't very big. And my, but mainly over anything, it's just that my voice wasn't very good at that time. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Paul was your time with Priest. Uh, when did you, did you join the band? Uh, the material was, was ready composed. Yeah, I joined in '96, and they they had already written a lot of those songs were written throughout those years. You know, uh, not knowing if Rob was coming back or what was going on, so the songs were kind of written. Written just about how they always wrote songs. Always, Glenn said, "This is how we've always written them." And, um, it was uh, it was a fantastic. It was a great. Time. I mean, you know, I, I felt like family right from the start, and uh, it was really nice, you know, the, the relationship we have, and we still have. It was a great relationship, you know, they treated me. You know, me being the big fan coming into this, I became a family member right away, you know, so I was more friends with, with uh, Judas Priest than I was then. You know, probably, you know, we got along great, and uh, that time was fantastic. Uh, many, many fans are uh, uh, accusing you. <laughs> From Chen, the, the, the sound uh, from Judas Priest, but not mine, no, not, not mine, neither my, my friend. We know that the material was already composed because the, 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 this new material sound uh, more brutal, more modern. Yeah, well, uh, uh, listen, then who's, if it's my fault that Judas Priest changed, then whose fault is it with every record Judas Priest puts out is different? Mm -hmm. I mean, Nostradamus sounds nothing like Judas Priest ever wrote, ever. Mm -hmm. Turbo sounded nothing like Judas Priest ever. Um, you know, Judas Priest changes. They wrote Painkiller, and, it, and Jugulator was a transition. It was kind of following what was going on. You gotta remember, Judas Priest always went with the times a little bit. One started playing arpeggios. Uh, Pain, uh, Pantera was really big. Painkiller, they toured with Pantera. Pantera opened the Judas Priest. Painkiller was a heavy record, and this was a natural progression. The difference is I probably had a, a few more different layers to my voice that they could tap into some e deeper uh, death metal -y kind of undertones to be back up and some different, you know, different types of voices that they might be able to try. Um, but it was Juice Priest. I mean, you know, I was it. You gotta remember. I'm a big fan of Judas Priest. Mm -hmm. Still am and always was. Mm -hmm. So me listening to Jugulator and Demolition as a fan, that would be, I would be, and in all, I mean, this is great. This is great Judas Priest stuff. And as Judas Priest continued without me as a fan, I would, I would really look back on the Jugulator records and Demolition and say, man, that was some, that was some great stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it was Judas Priest, you know. I mean. Not everybody liked Turbo. Some fans did, some didn't. Um, I love Judas Priest because they changed. Mm, I, I, um, I prefer the, the, this, the, the, your, your face in the band live. Uh, seeing the, 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 the DVD, the live DVD, or the live album, then the studio albums. I, I really prefer the, the I, On stage, I, I really the true band. Uh, the yeah. studio, I, a jubilator for me, sounded a bit. Uh, Strange. See, I, I, I do the opposite. I like the songs better on the recording than I do live. Now, I do love them live, but on the recording, songs like Bloodstained, with all the layers and the different attitudes, you can't do all of them. Um, songs like One-on-One uh, -on -one from Demolition, I mean, it's... The, the live versions are fantastic and they're great songs to be live, but when I go back and listen to them, which isn't very often, um, it's, it's the sound of it's great. And when I put those sounds compared to even the Juice Priest records that have come out lately, the sounds of those records, the tones, and, the, and the, you know, I just I really love it. I think it has a raw power. But I understand it, and that's a great thing, because hearing songs live, it's great when you can hear them live and it's, and they, you know. Listen, the most popular versions are the live versions. Burn in Hell is more popular live than it is off the studio. Mm -hmm. um, now, Burn in Hell, I might like a little bit more live when I do the studio. But I love the studio versions and I love the, uh, you know, I love the 
Steve Aspires. You know, it's, uh, it's great. It's, uh, it's a good time. Okay. And about uh, ICDF, uh, when did you join the band? Uh, we, we uh, for, for now, I, 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 I think it's the best uh, work from your career until then. We yeah. love, uh, we love, uh, uh, Burden. 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 Yeah, Burden. I do too. I love it too. All the song. I think I, I actually like, prefer my Judas Priest work better than the Glorious than the Eister work. And it's probably because I like the music. I like it was a little bit more of my kind of style of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely love. I actually like Framing on the Getty. Now I didn't at first. I love Glorious Burden. Getty's Burden is a, is a masterpiece. But. Now that I go back and listen to the two records, I prefer Framing Armageddon. Not the filler stuff in between all the songs, there's too much filler stuff, I, I prefer Framing Armageddon. But fantastic stuff. I did, I did uh, uh, Glorious Burden when I was still in Judas Priest. At the end of Judas Priest, we weren't really working. I could almost see the end coming, I could see it. You know, I just knew it was probably going to be coming to an end. There really wasn't any money coming in at that point, and uh, John Schaefer had uh, part ways with Matt and John Paulson. and said, hey, would you be interested in just doing the vocals for George Burton, not doing the band, because I'm still in Jewish place. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went and recorded them, and I thought, man, this is, I love it, man, this is awesome. And then when I got home from recording the record, uh, I, got a, I got the message that Jesus Priest had let me go. But I would have never quit Judas Priest, never. But I did. I was glad to be out of it because it freed me up to do some more stuff. You know, I never could do other stuff. Uh, so it was, it was, you know, around late 2000, or late, late, yeah, late 2003, when when Priest made the announcement, it was kind of. That's pretty much when that would change. But the, the album's already recorded right there. Mm -hmm. I see there for me, it uh, seems a uh, John Schaefer project. No, no, no more a, a real band. Well, it is. It absolutely is. It's kind of like Ingve Malmsteen, you know, uh, Iced Earth is John Schaefer. And, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, John built this band up. You know, John was the mastermind who did this, you know. Uh, to me, the, the, the two, obviously, two pieces in that puzzle was John and Matt, and, um, you know, but they can always continue to go on, um, but, I, you know, I got that when I saw the revolving door of singers and bass players and guitar players and drummers, you know, so it's basically like the envy of a band, it's just named Eister, but, you know, he, he made it. You know, as like Ingve made Ingve. I mean, uh, Dio made Dio. I mean, these guys made it. His is just a band that started from the beginning, and he fought and clawed his way up to uh, to make it. Mm -hmm. He certainly can't change it to John Schaefer now because they wouldn't sell records. He has to keep it nice to it. But you know, John made it. John made a business. It's a business. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, you record a solo album or uh, uh, Beyond, Fear. Beyond Fear. Beyond Fear. Uh, why is the Beyond Fear the one that you record a solo album? Well, I did the Beyond Fear record, and then the record label and Wendy Dio suggested my next record be a solo record, and um, and then you know it's really in this day and age it doesn't it's hard for me to make another Beyond Fear record because not enough people buy records. There's no record label that's going to pay for the record to be made. So for me to take time off and to pay for my record to be made, you know, I got a house payment. And I, this, this is a job. Um, and I can't tour. I can't afford to tour with Beyond Fear. Like, I can't bring Beyond Fear to South America. The guarantees to me would be exactly the same as me flying over here and, and using a new camp. So, so what, what we're going to try and do, I've talked to John Capri, my guitar player. And we were writing a movie on a fear record. The music was recorded, and I was doing the vocals. I think we're going to use most of those songs, and I'm going to make a new solo record, and just kind of use the guys, my, my drummer and John Capri, most of you guys from Beyond Fear, and they'll help we'll do it. Release it as a Tim Rick Rowans record, because it's easier for me to tour the world under Tim Rick Rowans than it is under Beyond Fear. 
but it's just too hard financially. You know, I don't have to make records. Right now, I can tour the world non-stop playing my solo song, Beyond Fear, my Judas Priest songs, and Jugulator, and all those songs, and a few classics thrown in there, uh, a few of my I Stir It songs, and Winter's Bang songs. I can record, I can tour doing that. Mm -hmm. and make a living. If I have to go back and do a band, you know, that just costs too much money. No, okay. And um, uh, right after then, yeah, uh, you recorded with the Windy Mountains then. Yeah. Um, personally, uh, I like the album because of you. Because uh, uh, Mom's is a very boring, sorry, sorry, for my opinion, I think uh, he is very, Buried your vocals and the mix. Yeah, it's not a very good mix. I don't know if anybody's ever been known for great mixing. Whoever he has engineering, there's a certain thing about it, but it's really strange because live he has a great sound. There's this there's this power live that sounds really great. But in the studio it never comes across. But I'll tell you it was a it was a blast working with him. He was great to me and in the studio. It was really fun to work with. I would sing it one time and he'd go, I would say, let me do it again. And he'd be like, no, 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 that was it. That was the tape. Don't do it again. I want that one. I was like, no, let me do it. I can do it better. He goes, no, we don't want to keep it. Let's keep that one. It was really cool. It was kind of like he wanted to keep the, the natural. And he's a, he had a blast. We laughed. We, you know, so I had a good time. The thing is, Ingbe's stuff is different for me. When you say, Like you like you like listening to it because of me. You got well. Ingve has his fans. I mean, there is an Ingve thing where his musical you know stuff going on. With him, right, so he has those fans. So it was nice for me. I wanted to come in and grab some of his fans and bring some people in to me. You mm -hmm. know, because um, I think it was something that that I could really get get some new fans out. And I got to sing with a legend who really, I mean, anyway, really changed the face of guitar mm -hmm. playing. Mm -hmm. It totally changed it. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, I really enjoyed it, you know. I, uh, it was a different thing, and I just had to quit anyway. And I had said too much going on, but, you know, I enjoyed it. And I, I, would, I would do another record with the jazz. Very talented, and he loves to play guitar. He sits around and plays guitar all the time. He has a guitar sitting next to us. We don't reach really over just play blues and play stuff and I'm like, man. It was pretty it was pretty awesome to see that how much passion he has. Well you came back uh, some years ago with a Dear Disciples and Project Rock. Uh, I never heard it uh, except from the YouTube footage. Yeah? Uh, it, it, it's, it's a it's a, a great project. Do you do you do you intend to record that? Which project rock? Yeah, project oh, rock. We, we actually have an album done. Um, it's being oh, released. Really? Cleopatra will get ready to release it. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's it's pretty. It's it's a lot different for me. It's a little more straightforward kind of rock. You know, uh, uh, I think it's like a hard rock with catchy choruses and just straightforward. Really good. I absolutely love it. You know, James Kotek on drums, and Carrie Kelly on guitar, who's from Alice Cooper, and, and Mike Payne slash the straight bit. Um, Rudy Sarzo on bass. And it's really good. We started off just doing a, a, a Just going out and doing our music, you know, Jewish Priest and Ozzy and whatever in Russia. And Carrie said, man, this is great, let's write music. And so it's done and coming out. And um, it, it should be out within months, I don't think. When, when, when the CD will be released? I don't know. It, I, I, I would think either January, maybe February, somewhere in there. And then, and then I'm also doing my third Charter Walls of the Dam. Well, record with Richard okay. Christie, and that's uh -huh. my third one, I'll, and I'll do the vocal to that in January. So I'll have two records coming out mm -hmm. within a year, two new records. Uh, uh, besides the, of this project, pro do you have a plans to, to do a new solo album? Or? I'm going to try. It's hard to...
try to fit this in, you know. I just I just wrote some some songs, five songs for a movie. Uh, me and a guy named Marzi, we did uh, we did uh, some songs for the zombie movie. And I do a lot of singing for other bands. Uh, Soul Spell, I sing a lot of their stuff. Oh, yeah. um, but you know. Uh, I have the material written for the solo record. I, for, what I'd like to do is re-release my other solo record. I'd like to remix it and re-release it because I don't think it was released properly when SPV went bankrupt. It wasn't really so. I'm thinking about taking half the songs from that record, adding on a few more new tracks, mm -hmm. maybe a live song, mm -hmm. and uh, put that out there. But I have I have material written, like I said, recorded that we recorded beyond beer, so I probably have five songs right now that I could finish. You know, so maybe, you know, also two songs from my solo record, the song Play My Game and the song It Is Me was actually written by myself and it was on the Beyond Fear gonna be on the Beyond Fear record. And recorded with Beyond Fear, but we left them off for bonus tracks, but we don't use them. So anyways we'll I'll try to get uh, uh, another solo record out hopefully this year as well, or next year. So it'll be three records I'll release in one year. So oh, it's all different. Project Rock, straightforward, hard rock. Uh, Charter Wolves of the Dam is kind of a thrashiest, kind of like ice dirt kind of a stuff, you know, crazy mm -hmm. stuff. And then my solo stuff probably be a little bit more brutal, probably be more of the screen machines and the, the It'll probably be heavier. Oh, okay. I want my next solo record to be. Jamie Josta told me um, in a podcast at the city. He said, "Man, you got to come out and just be ripper, just be ripper and be heavy." And I'm like, "Great, <laughs> you know, everything good." Okay. Uh, well, the, 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 the space is yours now. Uh, so if you give a message to the, the your fans in Brazil, feel free. Hello. I'm, I'm going to speak in English. <laughs> anyway, hello, thank you. Thanks for all the fans in Brazil. I love it here. I love coming here. Thanks for the support, and I'll keep coming back if you keep coming out. Keep it heavy. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. We are very honored. Enjoy the show tonight. I'll see you oh, okay. Oh, for sure.